Welcome back. Well, it was quite a debate last night, as Ron Burgundy might have said, that escalated quickly. My next guest, Donald Trump, he wants to rebound from the Iowa loss and take New Hampshire to hang on to his frontrunner status. And Mr. Trump joins me now. Welcome back to Meet the Press, sir. Who was coming in second and maybe first to loss? Oh, well, no, well you tell me. Let me ask well, you. I'll tell you what. Let I'll me ask you, you this. Uh, how, how much do you need a New Hampshire win? Uh, I don't think I need it. I hope that I get it. I'm doing well. I have a great relationship with the people of New Hampshire. I've been here long before politics. I have many friends that live up here. It's an incredible area, beautiful area. Um, I would say that I would like to win, but I don't know that it's necessary. When you say, you know, the Iowa, I came in second out of, you know, originally 17 mm -hmm. people. Uh, there are those that say I actually came in first, depending on how you want to count the votes, right. to be honest, because that was a horrible thing that took place. But uh, I was very proud of Iowa, and I'd never done it before. So you, you don't accept, has, well, do you not accept the Iowa results? I think what happened think was they're very uh, unfortunate. I think it was very unfair to Ben, and in a certain way it was unfair to me. It affected me the same way as it affected Ben, because a lot of votes were added on. I mean, a tremendous number of votes were added on, and I was a strong second. But I'm not thinking about Iowa. I'm thinking about New Hampshire. I don't care about it anymore. I can't help but notice that you're a little humble, a little humbled by what happened in Iowa. Is that fair to say? Well, I don't think in terms of it. I, you know, I, I worked hard there. I really liked Iowa. I liked the people of Iowa. I, the caucus system is a very complex mm -hmm. system, and uh, a lot of things can go off with the caucus system. I like this system much better in New Hampshire, where you go out, you like somebody, you vote. And you can have a ground game and all, but the ground game in Iowa is very important, whereas the ground game here is different. Are you looking at your campaign saying, you know what? Maybe I need to do some more traditional things in addition to the non-traditional yeah, stuff that's been successful. That is true, and I think that you'll see it here. Uh, very important was that we get through the debate because I didn't want to have a bad debate or right. even a modest debate. Uh, and I think we did very well in the debate, according to all. Because, you know, some of your Iowa staff has said, boy, we could have used a lot more resources here. We could have used a lot more there. Is well, that, I gave are them, they right? No, they're, no, they're totally wrong. I gave them unlimited money. I said, do what you have to do. I gave okay. them unlimited money. I, you know, I thought, hey, look, I'm $50 million under budget. Mm -hmm. I thought by this time I'd have 40 to $50 million spent, and I've spent very little because I haven't had to, because people like you put me on all the time. What do I take a commercial for? Right? Oh, there you but, go. But I really that's... thought that I'd be up to about 45 or $50 million, and, you know, I'm not. I look at somebody like Jeb Bush, where he spent over $100 million, and he's nowhere, and I say, how does that happen? Let's talk about last night's debate. I want to play something you said that raised a lot of eyebrows. It was about waterboarding. Here it is. I would bring back waterboarding, and I'd bring back a hell of a lot worse than waterboarding. Okay, what's the worst? Well, you didn't see what I said before that. What I said before that was, in the Middle East, you have people chopping off other people's heads. Mm -hmm. This hasn't happened since medieval times. There's never been anything like this. So, I, and I talked about that, and then I said, and by the way, waterboarding is peanuts compared to what we're talking about happening there. So I said I would absolutely approve waterboarding, and I'd go a lot further than What does that mean? What is a lot uh, further? I mean, I'm not going to define it to you on this program, but I would be uh, very much in favor of going beyond waterboarding. And believe me, in terms of getting information, it works. Don't you worry, though, that... Look, we're the United States. We set an example. We're supposed to be better than that. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. supposed to be, yeah. as much as, look, we're looking at sure. the medieval, you, sure. we don't do those medieval things. Medieval times. We don't want to be barbaric. We're if they want to be barbaric, we're not barbaric. Okay, they can do it, but we can't. Look, when they fly planes into the World Trade Center, mm -hmm. kill thousands of people, and many, many other things, you see what's happening all over the world, whether it's Paris or here or anywhere else, mm -hmm. uh, you can do waterboarding and you can go a step beyond waterboarding. It wouldn't bother me even a little bit. Uh, another part of the debate uh, had to do with health care. Look, you've been hit on this. It is unclear to me, though, you want more government, you want some sort of government system on health care. Yeah. You don't like the system that's in there now. That I understand. Right. But describe the Not system. Not single payer. Describe the system that okay. you want. Let, let me explain. Okay. First of all, what I do, I have a massive company. I have thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of employees, and I have in many different states. You have artificial lines around each state. You know why? Because the insurance company take care of the politicians, mm -hmm. so they don't want to get rid of the lines. If you got rid of those lines, you would have great private insurance, and it would take care of most people. It would be an unbelievable thing. In addition to that, you can have a savings, you know, you can do the savings okay. uh, uh, situation where you would have health care savings accounts, and it would be fantastic. There's so many things you could do. The problem is the insurance companies don't want to do these things, and they don't want to specifically get rid of the lines because they'd rather have a monopoly in New York, as an example, right. than let 
50 companies come in and bid, companies from Iowa, companies from New Hampshire. But you're going to have to structure a government okay. program no, no, to no, deal with no, this. No, no, here's, here's, no, here's what you do. So you're going to have a great system. But there will be people left that don't have any money. And what I said last night is I don't want people dying in the middle of a street. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen right. if I'm president, okay? This isn't single payer. This is using our hospitals to take care of people. You work them out. You reimburse the hospital, because so we will get. We will expand get, Medicaid. We will. You can do it through Medicaid. Yeah. You can do it through some other way. But I'm just saying, very simple. And this has nothing to do with single. This has okay. to do with humanity. This has to do with having a heart. We can have unbelievable insurance at a much lower cost. You know, I don't know if you know, Obamacare is going up 35, 45, 55 percent. The premiums are through the roof. In 17, it collapses. You're going to have people, you're going to have great plans, but you're going to have people that won't be able to afford even 10 cents. We cannot let them die in the streets, Chuck, and we're going to take care of them. Now, we'll okay. take care of whether it's Medicaid or, or you're going to work out some kind of a deal with hospitals to take care of these people. Okay. But if I'm president, people aren't going to be dying in the streets. Let me go. There was a tough piece this week in the Washington Post implying that your campaign and that you, indi in, uh, you individually are tougher on women correspondents, women anchors, women, women reporters than men. Really? I haven't uh, seen that. It was Paul Farr in the Post. Uh, Trump's penchant for insulting people and organizations that displease him is well known. Less remarked upon, however, has been the special comments that Trump pours out for the women who chronicle his campaign. Uh, I, I there's disagree. a perception. I think there. I've been tougher on you than any human being on earth in terms of reporter. So I think my wife believes that too. Okay. But, no, no. But in I, all honestly, fairness, but I've, I've been tougher on you than I've, anybody. I've heard these whispers before. There's a perception out there. How do you get rid of the perception? Perhaps it's the Megyn Kelly situation. Hey, look, she gave me a, a really phony question. It was a setup question. It wasn't even a question. It was a statement. It was inappropriate. And I hit her hard, and I think that's fine. But if you gave me that question, I'd hit you the same way. I mean, you are the perfect one to answer. You, you have been, you know, under fire from me for a long time, and you are far from a woman. Well, <laughs> that I can tell you. Well, that is that is a fact. You know, uh, thanks. Things. Look, no, no, look, I don't, we all have to. I, I never skips. even heard this. I haven't seen the report. You haven't seen the report. I haven't seen it. I mean, I get so much publicity, I don't get to read everything, unfortunately. But uh, this was in the Washington Post. It was in the Washington Post a it's, couple it's days ago. It's totally. Uh, look, I think I, uh, there are some women. There's one sitting right over there in the beautiful red dress. Do you see that woman over there? Well, it's I have off great camera. respect for that woman. Uh, it, and I don't know if she knows that I'm talking about her. I'm talking about you. I would never do right. that to I you. believe he is referring to Andrea Mitchell. I am referring to Andrea. Uh, I want to ask about one final thing here. I know we're running out of time. In 1999, when you talked about running for president, right. you hinted that it may be easier to pledge being a one-term president because you take the politics out of the second term. You still feel that way? Well, I think there are certain advantages, but if you're doing a great job, I've seen people do that and then want to go further yeah. and do more and, you know, good people, and they never win because people say they said one term and mm -hmm. you know it's a real negative so i don't want to say that but there are certain advantages to it but if we're doing great and if the people like me if i was lucky enough to win you know my whole theme is make america great again we're going to make america great again we're going to make our military strong we're going to take care of our vets we're going to have strong borders we will have the wall you know so many different things health care we're going to mm -hmm. take care of we're going to get rid of obamacare we're going to have great plans for much less money we're going to make america great again i i will tell you if we're doing a great job we'll keep going and if we're not, you know, we have automatic termination. It's called the voters will terminate. Right. But that won't happen. So you're not me. doing a one-term pledge? No, I'm not going to do a one-term pledge, no. All right. If I'm doing a good job, I'll keep going. Donald Trump, I have okay. to leave it there. Thank you. We'll see you in South Carolina. Thank you very much. All right.